Let's try this. Echo! Echo! You're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful! Oh, it worked. What's up guys, I'm Yes or No, and I believe that echo chambers will be the death of us all. Actually, no, I think that climate change or artificial intelligence will likely be the death of us all, but I do think, <laughs> I do think that echo chambers are really, are really, liberty, liberty. Liberty Biberty. This is actually a perfect case in point because what I want to say is that I really think that echo chambers are ruining our ability to think as individuals and as a society. And I think they're also limiting our happiness too. Uh, what an echo chamber is, is basically like anything, like a platform, a society, a group, whatever, that keeps reinforcing the same beliefs amongst itself. What's really interesting to me is, so I grew up uh, in Ohio, I went to middle school and high school there. And for those of you who don't know, Ohio is very much a swing state. Hey, bada bada, get ready to go to bat for your political ideas because it is split 50-50, red and blue, liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican. And apparently I can't even remember blue and red, red and blue. I, uh, I got those messed up. We all saw it, we all saw it. Moving on. But being that I grew up in that kind of a neighborhood, in that kind of a school environment, it meant every day, like going into government class, it was like gearing up for war, right? Like I basically had to fight for my points all the time. When I went to Harvard and was no longer in that 50-50 split environment, but was in a way more liberal environment, it felt like a lot had changed. Is it getting bright out here or is it just this liberal enlightenment? No, it's actually the exposure on my camera. I'm, I'm gonna change that one second. <laughs> All right, so continuing with the story. I went on my merry little elitist way to Harvard, right? And one of the pros of going there <laughs> was that like for the first time in my life, I finally felt like I didn't need to re-explain all the basics to people. It felt like, you know, it felt like instead of meeting me here, people were already meeting here. And so we could go even further, even deeper into the conversation. Um, but one of the cons of going into that liberal bubble, that liberal echo chamber, was that I wasn't having to look back at my root beliefs all the time. And I wasn't having to argue and articulate them as often as I had when I was in high school. And that's really one of the major faults of echo chambers, right? You might be pritter prattering, having all this conversation, chit chat about like, you know, your beliefs, when in reality, they might sometimes be built on faulty premises that you just don't check because nobody is there holding you accountable. And this happens in all different types of echo chambers, right? Liberal, conservative, and I'll get into it more like different types of content. And the place where you see echo chambers happening a lot, a lot, is on social media sites, right? Like think about Facebook, think about YouTube, right? I'm, I'm probably preaching to my own liberal choir right now. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But think about it, right? So you have YouTube and Facebook. What's their incentive? Their incentive is to make money. And how do they do that? Well, by keeping your attention on their platforms. That's very valuable to them, right? Because they can then sell that attention to advertisers who pay them and help keep their businesses profitable. YouTube and Facebook are not in the business of trying to give you as much diverse information as possible to make you a better thinker, to help all of us better seek the truth, right? That might be something that they're trying to do, you know, alongside their main goal, but their main goal is make money. That's their incentive. That's why it skews this way. That's why they keep flipping out content to you that they know you already like. And that's dangerous. That's how you get people watching one video about how there might be a superior race and then uh, getting more videos about that and more content about that and, you know, seldom being challenged that maybe all of us should have our rights protected. <sighs> Sometimes it blows my mind that we're in 2020. Don't worry, I'm not just gonna turn this into one big lecture. There are like more interesting rabbit holes I wanna go down, but just like give me, give me a couple more minutes to go like full on <laughs> teacher lecture mode. Look at the chalkboard on you, okay? Look, illumination, enlightenment. It's happening right now.
Let's go. So I remember a few years ago, I went to this thing called the Munich Security Conference, which is basically this conference where a whole bunch of world leaders get together and they talk about what are the biggest threats facing our society at large. And the issue of that year was fake news. Basically, one thing they touched on was about why it's so important for us to really take a deep look at what these social media platforms what their coding looks like, right? Because when you start to think about how so many people get their news from Facebook, right? About 18% say they get their news from Facebook so often, whereas 45% say they get their news from Facebook, you know, occasionally. It's really important that these social media sites don't just become, you know, spreaders of fake news because that can have major negative consequences for governmental affairs, such as <coughs> elections, <coughs> 2016. But bringing this back from fake news and going back into the idea of echo chambers, you know, the reason fake news is so effective is because we're living in our own echo chambers, right? Like I said, we're not questioning the premises of what we believe. So when we see an article title that more or less agrees with what we think, we're more inclined to just accept it. I don't like that. I don't like that. It feels dirty. Feels dirty to me. Cleanliness is the closest thing to godliness. Let's do some cleaning up. Let's do some cleaning up. Are you with me? Are you with me, America? Are you with me? She would just have a giant American flag in her garage. Let's put this away. America. Okay, but I promised you guys I wouldn't stay all in the realm of politics, right? So. Let's think about this concept of echo chambers in other content areas. I don't know about you guys, but my YouTube is basically filled with the type of content that I've been watching for like the last five or six years of my life. Like it does not push me new stuff. So what this means for me is that every single time YouTube pushes out a piece of fluffy productivity hacked content to me, oh, that's my kryptonite. Oh, I click and yes, I do feel emptier for it. I'm a dead shell of a human being, a vessel with no crew, and definitely no captain. On a boat to nowhere, a kayak headed to the edge of the earth. Must be a flat earther, must be a flat earther. How'd she get stuck in that echo chamber? <laughs> no, but th th this is exhausting, right? Because when you know you'd enjoy content about how to learn to make a macaroon or what the center of a black hole looks like. It's exhausting to always be pushed the same fluff content that your lizard brain want, wants to click on. You know, and there are a couple antidotes to this problem. Uh, one is just being a better human being. <laughs> right? No, but like intentionally seeking out content uh, that you want to make you more like well-rounded, more learned, learned. Learn it. But the second antidote, which I think is a bit easier, is just um, talking to people who share different interests and who share different beliefs. Like I really think more human interaction is the way that we fight echo chambers. Because think about it, right? Have you ever been stuck in like a one hour conversation with a person who you really didn't want to be talking with, but at the end you're like, you find yourself interested in topics you never even thought about before? Like, yeah, how big is the biggest wind turbine in the world? And yeah, who, who does own most of the land in Africa? Why, why is Seoul the plastic surgery capital of the world? These are really important conversations to have, right? Because they get us to think from different perspectives and to think about different things. We, by ourselves, individually, will never be as smart as we, the collective, right? As all of human knowledge, right? So you level up by absorbing information from other people and testing it out against your own. Obviously, of course, this would be a good point before you go and do that to learn about like logic fallacies, right? <laughs> so that you don't just get like, whoop, sucked into more rabbit holes, but like really question what's coming at you and really go seek to find people who like will bring in more, you know, food for thought, food for thought. Mm -mm -mm. So delicious. You guys, I literally always walk inside and then immediately realize there's something I forgot to say. Uh, so remember how last week, how I was talking about you want to cut toxic friends out of your life, 
basically, and only surround yourself with people who treat you the way you want to be treated. I think the distinction between that week's video and this week's video of like talking about breaking out of your echo chamber and surrounding yourself with people who think differently than you. I think the difference between that is you do want your small social circle to be kind of an echo chamber in a way. An echo chamber of positivity, an echo chamber of positive values, of respect, you know, an echo chamber of something that feels safe to you, right? Um, but then after that, you know, after you get past your smallest group of friends, I think you know, the larger community, that's where you really want to expose yourself to different ideas and different personalities. You know, but the thing about this antidote, right? The antidote of talking to a lot of people in order to not get stuck in the poison that is the echo chamber is, um, it's COVID times. And I know I say that in all my videos, but it makes stuff harder. <laughs> We're not supposed to be going out and socializing face to face. And let's be honest, virtual meetings are not as spontaneous. Honestly, during this time, social media usage has probably likely also increased, right? So when you think about it, we are more a threat than we've ever been to the consequences of echo chambers on our thoughts. And how scary, especially considering that there's a US presidential election coming up right around the corner. Chew on that, food for thought. Mm, yeah, I don't like the taste of this so much. Didn't think you did. Didn't think you did. So I'd encourage you. In fact, I challenge you. I challenge you to write down in the comments one thing that you always see pop up on your feed and then go and look up something completely different. Either something that challenges it or just something that's not even in the realm of it at all. Because the only echo chamber we want to be in is the one on this channel, am I right? Am I right? Right, right, right! You heard the echo chamber. Subscribe to get more content just like this and watch all my videos. Bye.